Hi, this is Chris Georges with, tra with TrafficLabs.com. This is Lesson 2 in our series on True Traffic 9.0. Let's start out by opening up the model from Lesson 1. Uh, we left it with one arterial and that had, fifth, that had five intersections. And through a little movie magic, we will add two more arterials to our system of lights and 13 more intersections. Um, easiest way for me to add arterials is to go to the arterial outline window and collapse our arterial down and then click the add icon. Uh, this button can be used to add arterials and intersections. Now that we have a bigger model, let's dive into the network level. Again, the network level is accessed by the cross-hatched icon. This pops open the network parameters window. In this window, we can adjust parameters that are network-wide. This includes the tying plan that the time-space diagram is showing. Uh, this first model will show the tying plan for the AM hour. Under notes, we can write things like this plan runs Monday through Friday, 0630 to 0900. Next, we're going to write what cycle length in seconds that the signals in the network are running. Typically, if you're modeling a coordinated system of lights, there will be a common cycle length or a base cycle length for the system. We will start off by saying that our system of lights runs on a 90 second cycle or some multiple. Um, these multiples could be something like 45, 180, 60, 135. In later lessons we can talk about the advantages and disadvantages of various cycle lengths and the use of half or two-thirds cycle lengths. We will also talk about uh, other options in this tab and explore the header, footer, logos tab. Next. Let's look at the arterial level by pressing on the arterial icon. Now that we have multiple arterials in our model, let's make sure we are in the right one by looking at the header of the window that popped open. For instance, this one says City Hall Avenue and is not the one I want to adjust. To change which artery opens, make sure the topmost window is of the arterial you want to adjust. If we click on the diagram tab, you see we can manipulate four things about our time-space diagram of West Bramlington Avenue. Our first set of options is the type of diagram. While time space is usually what you want to see, some users will use the platoon progression or the time location when they're optimizing. Let's keep it on the time space for now. All these options list listed have to do with how you, the user, will visualize and control the arterial diagram. One thing I'll mention as we talk about the basics are the scales. It's here where you have one place to adjust how much or little of the diagram you, you need to see. You have how many 90 second intervals you want to see and, they, and then you can adjust how many feet you want to see horizontally. Uh, these scales are dependent on many factors and you'll want to have some control over them. Occasionally you'll want to compare diagrams so it will be important that the scales are the same between the two. Let's show three, scale, three cycles and a horizontal scale to 250. The next tab is the art, artery tab. Here you can rename the artery, add some notes like dates of future construction or current conditions. Um, let's go ahead and label ours current conditions February 2012. We have the forward direction again, offset reference point. And some, and some default parameters about what true traffic is using uh, like average vehicle length and some platoon parameters. The next tab is called Directional and has some other options that may become necessary later. Again, future lessons will go into more detail on what these boxes are used for. Artery diagram options can be manipulated in the Fonts tab. The last level is the Intersection level. You may notice that the icon is grayed out and that is because True Traffic doesn't know which, one, which of the intersections you will be talking about. Uh, the Network button worked because there was only one, one choice. The Arterial button chooses the arterial that was high at that that's in the highest window displayed. The way to get the intersection button to work is to click once on an intersection. Now the button becomes active and we can manipulate as necessary. I selected the Granby intersection and under the names tab we can edit information we know. Here I would say the most important thing is to get the name down. Any notes like no eastbound left storage lane and the ID number that corresponds to how you are going to keep track of the network of lights. We will call Granby ID number three I will show how to automate some of these other fields in future lessons. The timing tab has more fields to populate. The next tab is the green band tab, then you have lanes tab, a volume tab, and finally a link color tab. If you like everything, if you like everything click OK.
Before you end this lesson, let's go over how to navigate through, through this window. OK saves changes and closes the window. Apply saves changes but keeps the window open. Uh, cancel disregards all changes even if you have been clicking through tabs. Um, two helpful buttons are the next and previous buttons which advances the intersection window forward or backwards along the arterial. We breeze through a lot of things in this lesson, but you are well underway to building a working model. Again, this is Chris Georges with TrafficLabs.com, and look for future lessons by searching for True Traffic 9.0 in YouTube. You can also go to my website, www.trafficlabs.com.